Now that you're familiar with the parts of the tool that's going to set up an operation, you want to make sure your table is set at the appropriate angle. For most of your cutting, it's going to be a 90 degree, so it'll be set at the zero. Adjust there's some of them have a little gauge on the front, but they're not always accurate, so always check it with a square if it's really important. This, the next thing you want to do is make sure the blade is in between the guides. And generally it should be. It's out of adjustment. Either consult your manual or ask your instructor how to adjust that. And it should be up against the back guide assembly. Now we're going to adjust the guard and guide assembly into place. You want to, what I typically suggest to do is put it next to the blade, the, your board that you're cutting, set it right down on top of it and raise it up maybe an eighth of an inch or a quarter of an inch. So the upper guide assembly, you'll be asked this, if you're in a woodworking class, should be set at one eighth to one quarter above the top of the workpiece. This allows it to slide, allows it to guide the blade and keep it stiff as it's cutting through the work and also protects any exposed blade. This is not a safe operation when you have it, uh, the guard set that high, plus it allows the blade to flex during the cut. So definitely set the guard and guide assembly to the appropriate height. Before you even walk over to the saw, you want to take time and lay out your cuts. Now I've used a permanent marker. That's not what's suggested. I'm doing this for video purposes. There's a type of cut that you have to make because you're, you're limited to the radius that you can turn or how sharp you can turn on the bandsaw. This is what's called a relief cut. What I will do is instead of making this cut all in one pass, I'm going to have to make several straight cuts. And a relief cut is a short straight cut in order to avoid backing out of a curve. I'm going to make several auxiliary cuts or relief cuts and remove scrap material. This is all for inside curves. Outside curves I can just keep sharpening the, or turning a little bit, cut it off, turn a little sharper, cut it off, turn a little sharper, and eventually sand it smooth. The other type of cut you need to think about is you are allowed to back up, but you want to limit with the amount that you back up. Try to do it as little as possible. If you get jammed into a curved cut, you want to shut the machine down, then back out. Do not, otherwise, you'll pull it off the wheels, off the guides. But on a straight cut, it's OK. So are we? think about this for a second. Are you going to make the short cut first or the long cut first if I was removing this notch? Think about it. Hopefully, you said the short cut. You're going to want to make the short cut first, then back out. Then you'll make the long cut. This piece will fall away and remove, and you won't have to back up during a long cut. So let's go ahead and make a couple cuts. Now that you're, we're all set up, you're familiar with the parts of the machine again, we're going to make some uh, standard cuts. The first one I want to talk about is just a straight uh, rip cut. Everything's set. The guard's set to the right height, just to show you that. Right. There is a little bit of twisting and curving a lot, but you don't want to twist the blade. You want to listen to the machine. And I'm going to make one bad cut deliberately here so you can see if you can catch it. You hear it twist right there at the end. The motor just changes sounds while it's cutting. That's a, a good indication that you're twisting the blade. Watch the blade while you're cutting. One of the biggest pet peeves is to leave the scraps on the table, so always remove them, throw them in there. Generally, there's a trash can nearby in class, so keep that in mind. The next type of cut I want to talk about is a relief cut. You see on the camera here, there's some short, straight cuts. I've already kind of indicated I want to keep this, make this little curve on the edge of a bracket or whatever assembly I'm making. So I'm just going to come straight in and back straight out several times here. I'm being careful not to cut too far into my curve. And the amount of relief cuts is just up to the operator. I got a piece wedged in, and here's a good point to bring up. I got a small piece of scrap wedged in place. I want to shut the machine down, wait for it to stop, and then reach around and remove that piece. Unfortunately, of all the students that have gotten injured in my class, three of the four have tried to reach and grab a small scrap like that. So keep that in mind when you're removing small scraps. I'm going to finish my cut. So I remove my left hand because I was getting too close to the blade. 
Remove again, remove my scraps. And now as I make the rest of these cuts, we'll just continue on around and then we'll sand it at the end. That piece falls away. That's another way to remove cuts is use the block of wood. However, you don't want to make sure you don't want to hit your piece. Make the next section, let it fall away. It's going to take a little bit to make that curve. I got one more cut right here. Remove my pieces. As you notice the hand on this piece is further away from the board. That gives you a little more control than up close. Your movements aren't so jerky. It's a little more smooth flowing. I'm going to clean it up. I got a piece wedged in there. The last thing, I don't know if you can see it on camera, is the pieces I haven't thrown on the floor. This is one of the most dangerous places is to throw these small little scraps onto the floor. Those are what we call tripping hazards. During the whole entire operation, I tried to prevent my hands from keeping in path with the blade directly in lines. I still have the three inch margin of safety zone, just general safety, but I also didn't put my hands directly in line with the blade. We're going to make one other type of cut here, which will be the L-shaped cut. Let me switch pieces. All right, now we're going to move on to a different type of cut, which we're going to remove this corner. Remember, we, we've already discussed whether you make the short cut or the long cut first. We're going to go ahead and make the short cut, then rotate the piece 90 degrees and make the long cut. Hands are on both sides, clear the blade, not in line with it. Go right up to my point, back up, straight and carefully. You notice I slowed down when I backed up. And again, my hands are towards the back of the piece so I can steer it. Piece is removed, shut it down, wait for it to stop. Be sure to always clean up the scraps. We've mentioned that several times. Summary, or in review. The bandsaw is one of the most versatile and most safe tools in the workshop. Just be sure to follow all the safety guidelines as you're using the tool. Keep your hands out of the margin of safety, adjust the guard and guide assembly appropriately, make sure the table's locked into place. Use the fixtures, the rip fence, the miter gauge. Lay out your cuts, definitely lay out your cuts. With the relief cuts, pay attention to where you're going to have to back out. And if you do get into a jam, make sure you shut the machine down before you back out. Finally, be careful about where you're standing and where your scraps end up. Do not throw those little cutoffs onto the floor.